Right, welcome everybody to our Design Thinking for HR webinar. The webinar today is being conducted by Frederick Kanchins, who is founder of Boxology, which is an organisational design consultancy. Um, the webinar will be 45 minutes long. If you could all be interactive and ask questions throughout um, on the questions tab. And then towards the end of the webinar, we will reserve some time um, for questions, five to ten minutes, and Fred will answer the questions that you've put forward. Um, just a few housekeeping rules. You will get a recording of this webinar um, through your email um, next week, which will also contain a discount code for our Future Workforce Conference, which is taking place on the 21st to the 25th of April in Riyadh. Um, and Fred will actually be um, conducting a full workshop on um, design thinking for HR, which will take place on 21st of April. And you can sign up for that workshop um, after this webinar. So I think without further ado, I will um, hand over to Fred himself, who will now conduct the webinar. Thank you very much, Claire. So welcome everybody to this uh, webinar. Um, so, so a small introduction. Uh, so my name is uh, Frederik Hanschens. I'm from Boxology and uh, I'll be your uh, host today for um, the Design Thinking for HR introduction. Um, this uh, presentation will take around 30 minutes and then we will have around 15 minutes for questions uh, and uh, I'll try to answer as, uh, as many as possible. Um, so let's start. So design thinking for HR. So we're looking at how to put human back into human resources and doing so we would like to actually think about the organization in a pleasant way, in a human way, in a way that Actually, we would like to see the organization move forward. Um, when we're thinking of human, human resources, then, of course, within human resources, we have a good understanding of the human part of human. Um, but on the other hand, we would like also to focus on the process and effectiveness of how to provide our services uh, to the employees. And what design thinking comes in place is actually focusing more on the experience of the employee in, human, in the company, uh, rather than how we would like to have an effective process and how to actually um, have that process implemented. So looking back at uh, design thinking, um, myself, I have been uh, applying design thinking as an organizational design consultant for many years, I think around six to seven years now. And what I found very interesting about design thinking is that it actually allows you to have a stronger interaction and collaboration with people from different fields to think about how you can actually improve and make your organization more effective. And this focus um, is rather looking at the employee or the customer than the process itself. So today I'd like to actually introduce that design thinking for HR with a focus on employees and candidates. And I'll use also a few examples of uh, uh, hiring process, onboarding process, uh, um, where we can actually apply design thinking as a method to see how we can improve actually that service. So let me move to, first of all, the context of design thinking. So. Um, when we think of improving something in our organization, we look focusing on solutions. We are definitely thinking about software and applications and how we can engineer or customize them. Um, but a very important step is often forgotten, is actually thinking about the design itself. Um, not so much only from a user perspective, but also from how a person actually will experience that service once you have implemented it. So the focus is here on the design part. So talking about design, often we think of the assessment piece of what would we actually need. And we tend to move immediately to the as aspect of developing and implementing. Now, the design process itself takes us back into um, a mode of slowing down and actually thinking of how this application would actually work once it would be implemented. So it seems like we would say that design thinking helps us actually to predict somehow um, what would be the acceptance level and the experience of the user or the employee in this case for HR services um, or, or the candidate uh, when we would talk about it in hiring 
or onboarding process. So when we move into that context, um, we need to understand a bit of the background of um, design thinking. Um, first of all, of course, we have moved in society from a few, I would say, cycles of industrial revolution, um, from the mechanical to production and assembly lines, electricity bringing in, to, of course, computer and automation, where computers and automation would support our processes and, our, and the people. But ultimately, we moved into a fourth uh, industrial revolution, and that brings us to the cyber physical systems, networks, and artificial intelligence. But what does that mean for us? What does it mean for HR? What does it mean for HR is that actually, as we're looking at the generations moving into workforce, the younger generations, we're talking about the X, Y, and very soon also the Z generation. We also notice that these people have a different way of approaching things. We understand very well, and there's enough discussion going on on how they're thinking of work and how they're thinking of making money and how thinking of balance work and life has an impact on, 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 uh, on, on the way we want to plan the workforce or how we want to plan their work or how we want to hire them. But ultimately, it also tells us a bit more about how they interact with technology and what they expect from that technology. Um, I like to compare it with the way we have our apps on our mobile phones. We tend to quickly move the apps back and forth, delete them, change them, update them. We easily will move from Uber to Karim, depending on how we experience that app and how we feel that app will work for us. And ultimately, the same way we can expect that people start thinking of services even company services, HR services, um, in a similar, similar way. So let's look back now on how this generation that actually is moving forward to um, the, um, sorry for that. Um, so if we're going back to their thinking of how look at services, HR services, we definitely think about a different way, a different way of thinking, um, a different mindset. Yeah? But also we're talking about a different skills that we're looking for, different type of skills that we're looking for in the fourth industrial revolution. And ultimately, that shift of mindset, that different type of skills, that is also embedded in the way design thinking works. So what I'd like to do is actually explore a bit more on that aspect of mindsets. So when we're talking about mindsets, um, we're thinking of not so much is there a new technology that we can apply? We tend as HR professionals to see um, solutions, technology solutions as a way to solve a problem or to automate a process. But it's not about just the new technology that we can acquire in an organization. It's also not about booking a conference room and, and brainstorm about how we can improve our services. Neither it is about best practices um, and how other companies would have done this. What is it more? It's about an approach of solving problems, yeah? and also it's about enhancing experiences. Yeah? And ultimately, we want to have also our employee needs to be in, in, in the main focus. Yeah? And, and that's where we actually have the mindset of design thinking aligned with also the mindset we will find in the generation Y and also Z. So when we talk about that mindset then, so how would we then, for example, look about a process like hiring? Yeah? Let's imagine you go back in time um, as a viewer and a listener today on the first time you've been hired or just maybe the moment before you got hired. Often we have fears, yeah? fear about not succeeding in the interview. Um, but also we sometimes think that there are different types of reactions we may expect from the people in the room. So what is that experience that we actually have? And what are actually the issues that we might find? So when we think about the hiring process in this case, we can say, for example, that in the hiring process, multiple people were involved in the hiring process. Um, that is very often very confusing. Um, is this the way a company is organized, you may ask here. Yeah? Um, also, same questions are asked about different interviews. How comes? Did they talk to each other? So even if we have a very smooth and very nice way of having the process set for hiring, and even we have the tools and applications in place um, to make that process very effective from an HR company perspective, 
how does actually the employee or the candidate, the future employee or the candidate in this case, thinks about your process? And that's the question also that in design thinking we'd like to ask. In a few more minutes and a few more slides, I will also explain how we can do that. So before I go in there, um, certain companies in the world have definitely early adapters, um, we would call them, have indeed moved on and actually have transformed their HR, human resource practice, into what they call an employee experience practice. So a few weeks ago, we had uh, at Informa, we had an, uh, there was a conference also in Dubai um, um, from Ashram, and there also was, for example, the previous head of employee experience uh, from uh, Airbnb. So there, the whole concept of having human resource as a service to the business. Here it is more about having human resource as a service to employees. And that also, in addition to the business, brings actually the aspect of employee experience uh, to, the, to the surface. Airbnb, uh, Virgin Media have done that, but not just for the sake of being trendy or thinking of moving on um, uh, in, 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 in the, in I would say, the trend of design thinking, but more often also because there is a cost related to not having a proper design of your hiring process, for example. So the reality is that if you go look into statistics, uh, like for example, LinkedIn published in 2015, a very interesting um, report on, on the trends of hiring. Um, what they found is that around 80 to 90%, um, yeah, sorry. So 80 to 90% of talents um, say they have a positive or negative candidate experience, can change their mind about the role of the company. Um, so the way they experience the, the, the hiring process, the process they went through for a company, had a huge impact. So for example, at Virgin Media, um, there's an interesting case that you can, you, that is public in the public domain, um, tells about exactly that, that, that experience of uh, candidates having an impact on how they see uh, being a customer for Virgin Media. So there is a relationship between how they see the company versus how they experience dealing with them through a hiring process. What's even more interesting in that, in that study says that 60% of job uh, seekers report having had a poor candidate experience. Now we can imagine that of course uh, that experience uh, might be linked to the fact that they have not been hired. But ultimately, what type of rapport, what type of relationship you want to keep with candidates that didn't make it to become an employee. And also, and that's the last statistic I want to throw to this uh, in this in this webinar, is uh, 70, 72% then of them have then shared their experience on an online employer reviewer site, like uh, Glassdoor. So that is really hurting a lot on the employer brand. So all the investments made on employer grant were somehow then also being, being reduced in terms of its effectiveness by negative feedback that was received from people that actually were not even employees of the organization. So these are interesting numbers, um, I would say. Um, ultimately, when we talk about uh, the employee experience, it's also how can design thinking improve, improve our hiring process. And that is exactly what we are going to talk about now as, an, as, a, as a case study. So taking the example, for example, take the example of um, the uh, employee life cycle. So the employee life cycle is looking at um, select, hire, recruit, perform, develop, and uh, transition, yeah, move out or move on. Um, that's how we would look at it from an HR process perspective. Now, let's have now the same process, but from an employee perspective. Now, let's look at the employee perspective. What is actually the life cycle of an employee? Well, practically what he's doing first is looking for a job. Um, hopefully being selected if he likes the job. Finally, also having um, the onboarding um, being uh, positive in the sense of um, everything that has to be done in the onboarding happens how it should be. Then go to work, meet people, get paid, learn things as well in the meantime, hoping to develop itself uh, ourselves. And then ultimately uh, one day we'll, we'll say goodbye. So that perspective um, is, is exactly what we are, uh, what we are looking for. Um, in the meantime, um, I noticed that we have um, 
a phase of the, of the, of the PowerPoint presentation, just a, a small, uh, yeah, we're good. So perfect, thank you. So um, hopefully you can see this slide. So yeah, so this is then the slide that I wanted to show on the, how the employee can reflect to the same process, but from his perspective. So when we say experience, experience is everything, yeah. Um, people will forget what you said during a hiring interview. People will forget maybe what you did even for them. The people will never forget how you made them feel. And that's a very, very, very strong um, statement um, that, uh, that, uh, that we also got. Uh, I, this quote actually from Maya uh, Angelou, um, a famous writer and a poet. Um, that's exactly how also we need to think about our employees and our candidate employees. It's about how they feel. And that experience part is um, where we want to focus on when we talk about um, uh, design thinking. So on one hand, we could say, let's have um, design thinking uh, started in our company. So how do you start design thinking? Well, we could say, let's bring all the HR people together and let's actually start um, thinking about how the employee exp experiences the services he gets from us. Employee relations, talent management, rewards, compensation, or even the promotion. We could also say, well, let's bring all the employees in a room and let's ask them. Both work and somehow, but actually are not fully efficient. Actually, both should work, both in the sense that we bring the experts to the table, but also we ask the employees. So the design thinking method actually brings to different exercises, which I will talk in a minute, uh, exactly about how to do that. Um, we should not forget, though, that when we ask people what they need, we often get not what they need, but we get a wish list. And that's one of the pitfalls, I would say, within the design thinking process, that may, or the method or the approach, is we need to be careful that we are not actually filling up our basket with all the goods that we need. I mean, I like to make the comparison of uh, going uh, shopping uh, and even making a, a shopping list. Often I get more stuff uh, home than actually I was intended to. And that's exactly also how we feel sometimes when we think about developing a leadership curriculum or um, just a training calendar. Yeah? Often if you go start, ask the leaders or the managers or the employees what they need for training. Um, we may then end up, for example, with uh, half of the meeting, half of the training rooms empty for the simple reason that we didn't actually provide them what they needed, but actually we provided what they wish. So asking them uh, or the employees or the candidates is definitely a one input. Asking the HR is also definitely an input. But where design thinking helps you is to actually bring a process in place with tools and templates that allow you to actually balance that correctly. So before I go into the tools and the templates and how what would be the way of doing it the right way, so I would like to introduce you for those who have not been seen yet the um, uh, the, idea, uh, the design thinking um, uh, I would say method. Uh, this is a visualization on the next slide that actually talks about what is actually the five four or five stages of, of design thinking. And most of the work done uh, during the workshops, and one of the workshops we'll have uh, so in the next uh, next month on the 21st of April, will actually focus on the defining ideation um, of the uh, of the of the design thinking process. But the design thinking process starts basically about the empathize, basically having that rapport, that relationship with your employees, um, having the forum in place where you can then define together. What, or define what actually is needed, what is actually, um, uh, who is actually your employee. Yeah? Um, ideate, actually also talking about the, the mapping that experience of employees and seeing where are the gaps, the emotional uh, experience, the, the actual experience, um, the feelings about that experience. Prototyping, where you go actually go and look at different ways of improving that process. In this case, for example, we're talking about the hiring process, the onboarding process, and ultimately also on the testing. It's where we go and test what we have actually 
uh, developed. And if it really works and really improves the experience of the employee or the candidate in this case when it comes to the hiring process. These are actually the five steps. Now, um, these five steps um, have uh, a very practical implementation when it comes to HR and improving HR services and HR processes. It helps definitely also in organizational design. It also helps in developing products. It's also helping in understanding your customers. It's a very scientific approach that has been proven very successful and been proven also to work. And for organizational design and definitely also des designing HR services, um, I strongly recommend to, to, to investigate in, in, this, uh, in, this, uh, in this method. Um, when we talk about the tools, well, in the design thinking process, we are actually looking often at creating personas, and that's one of the exercises we'll do in our uh, next workshop next month, is also looking at uh, developing personas. So what is actually personas? It's actually trying to define a model of the person or the employee that you would like to map the experience from. Now, this is a process that helps you to define and develop that persona or that define the, the, the employee that you would be talking about. You'll never meet that employee, you'll never meet John Doe, you'll never meet the customer, but in the ex exercise of persona, we actually develop a model yeah, that helps you to identify the type of employee that you would like to focus on. Let's say the target group you would focus on, the target group of candidates you might focus on. The next, um, and that's also in the testing phase, the next uh, sorry, that's in the in the defined phase. In the in the ideation phase, what we are doing there is actually we are mapping um, the experience of the employee, and we are doing that by um, very simple templates. We do it with uh, um, uh, post-its. Uh, we have big papers on the wall, and what we are actually doing is trying to create a visual presentation of the different stages through which the candidate goes through when he is looking at his experience as a candidate for um, uh, in the hiring process of looking for a job in your company. So having that exercise helps definitely recruiters, helps definitely HR to understand even the emotional journey that the candidate goes through. And this is in the ideation phase. Out of that journey map, you will be ident able to identify also what are the tools, the processes, the systems that you can adapt or can emphasize on more when you want to optimize the uh, hiring process of the candidate. So that candidate journey mapping is a very practical and very fun exercise to do actually, which allows us to have a good understanding of how the employee thinks, feels, and also experiences um, uh, being hired to your company. And if you do it for employees, for example, when we looked at uh, the um, uh, training and development, uh, we could do the same exercise and uh, developing an IDP or looking at how employee relations um, uh, provides its services. But also we can also map the business, uh, the business and how the business actually experiences the, the, how they perceive the services have been provided by HR. So these are different ways and different approaches that uh, help in, in, in various ways to actually having um, the service of HR improved uh, in your company. Um, ultimately, what you really want to understand is what is the experience of the business and the employee? And that is what I like with this cartoon. It's actually explaining to the to what we see in, uh, in, in a theater. Yeah? What we want to actually know is the front stage. We want to know what we see in the front stage and we want to make sure that what we show in the front stage is what we want to actually uh, b uh, build on for uh, or develop for the candidate or the employee uh, and where he also experiences uh, the service that he uh, receives from HR. Now how the backstage and behind the scenes it all works it doesn't matter. Now and that is what we often see in the hiring process is that we actually show the candidate the whole um, theater not just the front stage with his hiring manager uh, who is interviewing him, but also the backstage and behind the scenes. Now the whole thing is here to, the whole exercise is here to actually revamp your hiring process, for example, and your onboarding process in such a way that the employee or the candidate employee only sees what he requires to see. Um, and our process is then redesigned in that such a way that it actually focuses on the experience of the employee and also, of, of course, having the objectives met uh, to hire the person with the right contract and so on and so on.
So that's basically a nice visualization. I like that cartoon a lot because it actually tells you how you look at your process huh, from a front stage perspective, an experience perspective. Now, it's all about experience. Yeah? It's a mindset. Yeah? And I think also what I believe is, uh, let's not look at uh, the small, but also read the small letters. It's not about the process, okay? So mapping the experience seems like similar to mapping a process, but ultimately it's about the mindset and it's about the experience. Yeah? That after that also you improve a process, that is absolutely correct. So employee experience in that sense is, um, the sum of all experience of employees yeah, that, that you have in the organization. We're reaching almost uh, the last five minutes and I'd like also to start answering some of the questions you're sending me. Um, but before I do, ultimately what we have is we want to test as well. Yeah? And when it comes to the testing, um, I like the, actually this little cartoon. Eh? Ultimately, you want to test if your experience works. Well, um, you have to basically put it into, into action. Yeah? And ultimately, you'll understand if uh, if that process uh, uh, that you then developed ultimately after mapping the experience and improving your service, um, if it actually provides satisfaction and happiness to your employee. Um, another point that I'd like to uh, also do is a few giveaways uh, before we uh, before we uh, before we move into the questions is. Um, what is very useful definitely is when we call about the first step of the design thinking process is the user interviews, empathize basically. Um, it's always interesting to pair different roles and diff different experiences. Example, now we're back to the onboarding process. Uh, it would be useful to have, a, for example, the onboarding officer to sit together with the HR manager and uh, employees that have been onboarded, let's say, for example, the last three months actually to start mapping that personas, to have an understanding of who is actually your customer here, your internal customer, who is actually that, that type of employee that you want to improve its experience from. Second is then when we talked about, uh, remember the design thinking process, we talked about the uh, definition. Now defining here, it's defining through uh, journey mapping. So basically mapping the experience of the uh, employee's target group that we have defined and try to understand what experience and what was the journey of the experience through the process of being hired in this case. It's not a process, huh? it's really about the experience. Ultimately, we're talking about paper prototyping. Uh, we can use uh, paper pro prototyping um, through script of interviews, room layout, etc. We really can start building visually the change of how we want to make things. Um, not necessarily through a video and having a process uh, designed, but actually also maybe prototyping also the scripts of the way you do job interviews, um, but also the way you have the layout of the room, because again, that's also part of the experience. It's about how people felt, felt about having interviews in a certain room, uh, in a certain way with different types of questions in the way of the material and the scripts will have been used by the interviewers. And of course, then I like to call it the shop and ship is basically bring recently hired staff to witness your exercise when you prototype. It's very interesting to, to see how they actually uh, do it uh, and how they experience it. And they will give you very hands-on feedback on on, on, on if that prototype that you would select as the best solution to improve your hiring process would actually be working for them. So this is basically what I would call the four giveaways in terms of what you can do as practical practicality to actually look back into your hiring process or any other HR process, any HR service with employees, with candidates, or even with the business yeah, when it comes to servicing business. Um, so with that, I'd like to conclude my presentation. I have one more slide uh, for you to share. Yeah? So think for me, it's about, and that's the that's the my final note is think of HR not just based on internal processes, but as I said, experiences of employees and business, not just as a service to the business, not alone, not just the business. That's what I want to say. But think of HR as a service to employees and candidates. And that's basically how I'd like to uh, conclude my, my presentation for today and, and go back to and go now to answer some questions. Um, ultimately, um, uh, a, a bit of publicity. Um, <laughs> um, I will also have a book coming out. There will be some blogs published uh, on the HR Observer, on the HR Nomad. 
uh, which is talking about HR digitalization and, and HR remote working and the next generation, I call it the Z generation of part-timers and freelance work. Uh, and how um, HR roles and um, uh, jobs can look at uh, look like in in the in the near future. Um, also, I'd like to uh, share with you um, also the invitation, and um, Claire will talk more about the details on this at the end of this webinar, and also on the discounts you can receive. I invite you strongly uh, on our workshop on uh, Sunday, the 21st of April. This one will be in Saudi, in Riyadh. Uh, looking uh, forward to uh, to go back to Riyadh and, and have that workshop with you on design thinking for HR leaders. We will actually, during that workshop, go practically develop personas, uh, um, map employee experience through different uh, services of HR sampled, and we will also uh, prototype and test them. And um, I'm looking forward to uh, to have you on that um, on that workshop. So with this uh, first webinar on HR um, design thinking for HR, um, I'd like to thank you for your presence. We had a, a lot of uh, people joining this webinar today. Um, I would like to go now to the um, uh, to the to the questions. Um, so um, let me go and uh, click and see what is the first question. So thank you, Frederick. I have one presenter. Um, thank you, Frederick, for this presentation. Can you explain empathize again? Yeah, okay. So there's a question on uh, empathize. So the empathize is basically the aspect of putting a relationship, a rapport, um, with your, uh, um, I would call it also uh, with, with your actual employees or the people you, you focus on target group for which you want to uh, improve the experience. Um, I would also call it your actual stakeholder mapping at the same time. That's really looking at what type of employees targets you would like, which type of employees you'd like to focus on and target on and have that conversation, um, have that understanding, try to define what uh, or, or formulate their feelings, um, their thoughts about, uh, define the problem statement from the employee perspective. All that is empathizing. Um, I'm going to look at uh, another question. Um, let me see. So then, thank you, Frederick, for the presentation. How do you handle career pathing in HR? Okay, so <clears throat> that's a very good question. So when we when for career pathing is not as as any other service that we or what we call service to HR um, is definitely. Um, a very interesting topic for also um, to look into from a design thinking perspective. Um, do we design the career for employees? We believe that, of course, the career pathing is, 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 is part of our service offering, even employee value proposition, where people can develop themselves and grow in their careers through, within your organization. Um, ultimately, it's interesting also to go and back, back to that to that to that process. Uh, the policies related to that. Yeah, uh, it's interesting to look at your policies and how they are perceived. What people feel, how people feel about how we implement our policies related to that. So again, also career pathing can be taken care of as an as an as a as an as a service that we can think about and maybe improve from a design perspective and incorporate also the employee experience. Uh, in relation to how we implement career pathing and how we uh, how we actually provide that uh, to the organization, to the people uh, when they want to develop themselves uh, and also help them to grow in their career. Um, so I have, I'm looking at uh, some other questions. Um, um, okay, there's someone asking, uh, what are the activities to implement launch uh, to grow up the team spirit in the teams, the team spirit in the teams, okay. Um, so back to experience. I mean, um, team spirit is, uh, goes goes back to uh, how we how, how people have seen themselves part as as a as, as part of a team as part of an organization. Um, again, back also that is um, looking at how they experience that is partially having an answer on that question of how we can improve team spirit. Um, we can look at team spirit again from a design thinking perspective. Uh, we can first of all have an understanding of if there is an issue on the on, 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 on team spirit in the organization, um, what makes team spirit and how people perceive that and how they perceive actually the how HR supports team spirit or provides any services related to that and see how that can be improved in terms of its experience from the employee perspective. 
Um, I'm trying to see if there's any other questions. There's many questions coming in. Um, okay, so I'm trying to see any other. Okay, so yeah, now I have it. So yeah, okay. So thank you, Frederick. Can I explain empathize that's done. Uh, what's the title of the book? Ah, uh, the title of the book. I mean the previous uh, uh, slide. That's uh, HR Nomad. Uh, the HR Nomad. If you follow on uh, HR Observer on Facebook and uh, Inform, also will uh, publish some blogs on that particularly uh, in, the, in the next few weeks. Um, I will have now another question. Will chatbot threaten the recruitment hiring process? How it will affect the journey mapping? Okay, so that that's very interesting. So um, as as I mentioned in the in the presentation, it's not about setting forward the uh, technology as um, uh, to replace uh, the human uh, the, the human interaction. Uh, neither it is uh, also a way to replace um, the manual process. Yes, it may help, but definitely it's important to ask how the employee actually perceives that. Um, if it helps HR chatbots, probably it does, uh, in terms of uh, for having the opportunity to focus more on HR strategic work, around talent and leadership and organization design and, and employee experience as one of the topics that uh, HR would focus on more and more. Uh, but at the same time, uh, through employee uh, journey mapping, we can understand how chatbots can help to improve a certain experience. And if technology is there at first hand to do to improve that experience, then definitely chatbots will help. But we cannot go and assume, like I said in one of my slides, that technology will fix it uh, by brainstorming how we can improve the experience of the employee without asking them will help. Neither it will help uh, to think that uh, how other companies do it, uh, your company will actually benefit from it as well. It is about your ex employee, it is about your business, your company culture, and it's about uh, about the, the, the experience within the organization, which you cannot copy paste. Um, I have now almost, uh, we are done the last uh, five minutes. I'm trying to see if there's some other questions that we didn't answer yet. Um, uh, okay, how do you convince the business to support your approach? Well, um, I wouldn't say it's my approach. Um, uh, design thinking um, has been uh, an approach that has been adopted by many organizations already. Uh, even in the Middle East, um, design thinking uh, has been uh, implemented in the UAE. And certain banks I have spoken to uh, have actually adopted design thinking to improve the employee experience. Um, ultimately, it's not about convincing the business, it's about showing the business that um, HR, um, human-centric approach is actually saving the, uh, also the company money and improving engagement. Um, think about it this way. Um, when, you think, when you say that the business is not very impressed by sometimes HR is providing its services, well, let's engage with the business, understand their experience, and then the question is how can that work then? Um, well, design thinking is actually going through a process where you engage with your, 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 your customer in that sense, that's your internal customer. And that internal customer will be also participating and co-own actually the improvements that, you, that you're suggesting. I think that's definitely one of the best ways to build rapport relationship with, with the business as an HR professional. Um, so, <clears throat> we often limit uh, responsibility of uh, employee experience to HR, but in reality, uh, employee experience is broader than HR, and stakeholders are not just HR. It's a fair statement to say that. Um, that's a question uh, from uh, Hannah, Hanadi. Um, well, yes, definitely. It's not just about employees, it's about candidates, it's about customers. Yeah? Um, definitely in different types of businesses, are, are you in hospitality, are you in the healthcare, are you in the retail business? Definitely your customers are also, your, your employees are also your customers. Your candidates are often also your customers. The example I give from Virgin Media is a, is a very, very good example of that. So it goes definitely further than just your employees that you focus on as HR. You focus at your community, you focus at your social environment, uh, where you recruit in, uh, but also people that are ex-employees are also your customers. Yeah? They are also your brand uh, champions, your brand ambassadors very often, if uh, if you bring them into, into that perspective. Um, I'm looking at uh, the clock, so we have five minutes left. I'm sure um, uh, Claire will interrupt me the moment we reach to that uh, last minute. Um, 
So uh, this is a quick question also. What are the best books you can recommend to enhance my skills and knowledge on organization design? If your team can also send by email. Well, definitely uh, this person, Fernando from the Philippines. Um, definitely we can uh, I can provide uh, some, some suggestions on design thinking. Uh, there's definitely enough, um, not so much publications on design thinking for HR. Uh, but uh, at the end of the year, I will have also a book uh, on organizational agility, uh, which is called Boxology. Uh, it's funny enough, the same name as uh, my company. But um, that's exactly what, uh, what we'll talk about, how integrate agility and organizational design and design thinking uh, as uh, all together into uh, a practice of improving and making organization more agile and more uh, human-centric and employee-engaging. Um, so then what are the activities to implement and launch to grow up the team or the team spirit? We had that question already. So yes, we are running a consulting firm based on nomad consultants. However, we struggle to maintain a back office to administer the operation. Most of the Gen X still need to see a team and office before joining an operation. Any suggestions? Well, I, I'm, I'm, I don't. I can't immediately come to an answer on that. But um, definitely, uh, when we talk about uh, remote working, um, and uh, again, it's about how we um, how we experience our work and life balance. Uh, we talk about the X generation, Y generation. Definitely, work life balance is very important. Uh, the flexibility of work, even the Z generation, we can expect now coming into the workforce. Uh, they are looking at part time. They're looking at freelance. But ultimately, it's also about facing and uh, team facing. Uh, the worst thing that can happen is uh, definitely if you believe that everything can be done by remote working. Um, there's the face to face is a very important uh, aspect to our life and to our uh, to to how we handle and we do business. Um, and that is uh, definitely coming back. I know, for example, IBM being an early adopter to uh, to remote working has been starting to call back all their workers, uh, from what I understood, uh, because they really lack of that part of innovation and want to see more collaborative work uh, and more collaborative teamwork uh, in the office. Um, but also at the same time, um, helping them to improve their experience as employees, working together in that office, make it also more open spaces. And we know all the pictures of Google and and, uh, and Apple with, uh, with pool tables. Um, I mean, um, it, it goes about more greenery, it goes about more, um, more, more, uh, more, more freedom, more, more flexibility, and more, yeah, more happy happiness. I would say, yeah? and uh, that's where that's where a lot of organizations work on as well nowadays. Um, I, I'd like to actually invite you to download uh, Google images of offices in 1950s, 1960s, and Google about offices. Uh, and nowadays, you'll see the big difference in how uh, uh, how companies think about uh, their people. And facility management definitely is one of the first one having starting to focus on employee experience. But as HR, you can do that as well for your services. We're reaching the last minutes. I'm, I'm thinking I'll have to hand over to Claire. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, that'll be great. <laughs> thank you, Fred, so much for your um, excellent presentation. And thank you for answering all the questions as well. Um, just just to finish off, guys, I'd like to say that obviously our um, Future Workforce Conference will be taking place April the 21st to the 25th. So Fred's workshop will be on the 21st of April in Riyadh um, at the Crown Plaza RDC Hotel. So um, we'll be sending you an email. Um, with a 15% discount code to the conference um, and workshops um, next week. And it will also contain a recording of this webinar and Fred's presentation. So uh, get, allow us some time, but it will be in your inbox by next week. Um, so, yeah, if you could, you know, take a look and um, visit the website and see what you think. And thank you very much, everyone, for joining the webinar. And I hope to see you in Riyadh in April. Thank you very much. Thank you, Fred. Thank you.